Hey everyone, I am Jarrett Ross, the Genie Vlogger, and I am here today at the IAJGS conference with Zach Gordon. So Zach is a genealogist who has been working on uh, YDNA projects and he has uh, some cool stuff to tell us about uh, specific things with YDNA. So i leave it to Zach. So I'm going to talk about uh, the difference between an STR and a SNP, otherwise known as a SNP. So some of you, if you've taken a DNA test already, a Y DNA test, some companies offer tests that are called things like Y12 or Y25 or Y37, all the way up to Y111. That indicates the number of markers that are being tested on that particular test. Which I've actually taken the Y67 test. Cool. Myself. Um, <laughs> and uh, so those markers, uh, when you take a test like that, those are actually short tandem repeat markers, uh, uh, abbreviated as STR. And uh, what short tandem repeats are, they're a certain part of the DNA, a series of repeated sequences of bases, essentially like A, T, G, C. So it's a certain pattern that's repeated um, a certain number of times. And the value for each repeat is the number of times it's repeated. Let's say at a specific STR marker, you have a value of 12. That means you have 12 repeats. And when a mutation occurs, what's happening is it's either adding one more repeat or one less repeat. Basically, it's, it's changing when it's passed on from father to son. It, it changes from either one more repeat or one less repeat than the father had. These markers are, are relatively easy to test. They can say, uh, when you compare your values to other people's values, they can say a lot about, um, depending on how many markers match, you can say a lot about how you're related. The problem with STRs is that they mutate very rapidly, and they also are just as likely to mutate forwards as they are backwards. Um, and when I say forwards and backwards, what I mean is mutate uh, to back to the original uh, value that they... So, so that would be like, let's say, an, uh, an A changes to a G, and then it changes back to an A. Yeah, that would be a, that, that's an example of a backwards mutation. If in as far as STR goes, uh, STRs go, uh, what it would be more like you would have, let's say, uh, three copies of ATG, like ATG, 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 uh, and then it mutates to four copies, ATG, 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 and then it mutates back to three copies. Okay. So yeah, so that would be a uh, back mutation. Um, so STRs are just as likely to mutate backwards as they are forwards. The problem is it's very difficult to come up with a clear hierarchy of, of the mutation path for some of these. You can compare one person to another and take a look at the difference and we call that genetic di distance, uh, but it's hard to determine that this uh, particular STR uh, mutated first and everybody that has that mutation uh, inherited it from the same ancestor. I guess you could say this is likely that the same mutation happened simultaneously uh, in, in another closely related uh, line and uh, that's what accounts for the close genetic distance. <laughs> I think I'm done talking about STRs, I guess. Uh, SNPs, on the other hand, which stands for single nucleotide polymorphism, that's mutation in just one nucleotide. So it's basically just one A changing to T, that would be a SNP. SNPs mutate a lot less frequently than STRs do, and it's not very common that they mutate backwards. It can happen, but it's not common. It's a lot easier to use SNPs to build trees. So SNPs have a much more accurate representation of genetic distance than the STRs? Yeah, I, I guess I wouldn't say, I wouldn't call it a more accurate or less accurate representation of genetic distance. I think it's more, if you have a particular SNP, uh, you know, let's, let's say Y6923. If you have the Y6923 SNP and I have the Y6923 uh, SNP, it's a lot more likely that we um, inherited it from the same common ancestor uh, than maybe a value, a certain value, on, uh, or than a certain STR value. Because it's it's a lot less likely that the Y692 SNP would occur in a separate, in a completely separate line. So yeah, so that's the difference between STRs and SNPs. Well, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Thank you so much, Zach, for uh, explaining this to everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, well, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you did enjoy, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Be sure to click right about here-ish maybe, and you can subscribe. 
You can also follow me at Genie Vlogger on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'm Jared Ross, the Genie Vlogger. This is Zach Gordon. Thank you guys so much. I'm out.